Why would you guys go buy engineered fuel like this steel moto mix right here when you can go down to the gas station and fill your jug up for way, way less money? I know there's a lot of you guys out there right now are saying, well, I just fill my, my jug up with premium fuel because premium fuel is uh, ethanol free. And ethanol is the main culprit behind all of my fuel issues and my carburetor issues on my small engine equipment. There's a lot more to the story than that, you guys. S ethanol is a minor problem compared to the other stuff that's in here. I think I'm about to change some of your minds on what the actual problem is that you're having between fuel and your lawn and garden equipment. Welcome back to Steve Small Engine Saloon again, guys. Thanks for coming back. Hey, if you want to check my website out, I've got a little link up here for you in the information button as usual, and as well as at the end of this video, I got some clickable thumbnails there for you, take you back to some videos that I'm probably going to be talking about during this video. Um, I got nothing special on the go, guys. A little bit of Budweiser going right here. Um, Steel Limited, Steel Canada Limited, has provided me with some awesome visual aids to help us in this video that it's going to make it a lot clearer, a lot more easy to understand. So thank you, Steel, for uh, providing me with that. Let's look at this first one. This is great. This is what Steel calls the good, the bad, and the ugly. This is stuff that's in your fuel pump gasoline that you get right from your gas station. There's good stuff in there. There's bad stuff in there, and there's even worse stuff in there. So we're gonna start with the good stuff. What's the good stuff in here? The good stuff in your, in your fuel, the, the actual stuff that's actually fuel, truly, is, is your N-alkane, your isoalkane, and your naphthalein. These two alkanes right here, the N-alkane and the isoalkane, when you combine the alkane components together, what that makes is, the, is a true alkylate fuel. True alkylate fuel is, is comprised of pretty much nothing but paraffins. And as you can see from this next one right here, Moto Mix, steel Moto Mix, is comprised of almost nothing but paraffins. That is your true, pure, alkylate fuel right there. That's what you want to have in your fuel. So there's the good stuff that's in your fuel right there. What about the bad stuff that's in here? Not the worst stuff, but this is pretty bad. Yeah, you guys are all wanting me to talk about ethanol right now. Okay, let's talk about ethanol. What is ethanol? Ethanol is simply, it's alcohol. It's distilled from uh, plant material. Almost always it's made from corn because corn is uh, plentiful. It has sugar in it. You can make alcohol out of corn. What's the problem with having alcohol in your fuel? It attracts water. It actually pulls water into your fuel system. And we all know that uh, alcohol in your uh, lawn and garden equipment, whether it be a two-stroke, uh, four-stroke, four-cycle, two-cycle engine, we don't want water in there. That's a bad thing. Even worse than ethanol is your olefins. Olefins are chemicals that are found in your gas station pump fuel. And uh, look what this does to your small engine. Two-stroke, two-cycle engine carburetor right here. Chainsaws, weed eaters, blowers, whatever. This is what olefins do. They produce this gummy kind of residue in here and uh, create this varnishy kind of stuff on here that plugs your carburetor right up solid. I always used to think also, as, well, as most of you probably do too, that that was from the ethanol. That is clearly not from the ethanol. That is from your olefins. As you can see from this chart right here, again, Moto Mix made by steel has almost no olefins in it.
So what's the worst, ugliest part of having your fuel from the fuel station like this? It's not the ethanol, it's not the olefins, which are also bad, but even worse than that, you guys, it's the aromatics. It's the benzene in your fuel. Benzene is super bad for two different reasons. I'm gonna tell you what both of those are right now. Number one is health reasons. Benzene is classified as being a carcinogen. Carcinogens are known and proven to cause leukemia in people. Just in a nutshell, I'm not, and there's a lot more to this, but just in a nutshell, leukemia is pretty much cancer in your blood. I don't want to get leukemia. Do you? The other reason that's more relevant for us in small engine mechanics is uh, these right here. Here's a little cube carburetor from a two-cycle, two-stroke engine. You get that metering diaphragm. I've actually done another uh, uh, video on this if you want to uh, up in the I button right here. And as well as at the end of this video too, I'm going to take you through a video called uh, Partial Rebuild where I really show you about these diaphragms. But benzene is the culprit for doing this. It makes these little things hard and crunchy where they don't work anymore. They don't flutter up and down like that. You have that in your carburetor. It doesn't work anymore. It's not from the ethanol, guys. That's what I always used to think, too. It's from the benzene. And guess what? Steel Moto Mix has absolutely almost no benzene in it also. It's just pure, pure fuel. So now that you know all of that, how does this affect something like winterizing your equipment, long-term storage? Maybe you're putting it away for uh, three or four months, something like that. The, a lot of the manufacturers out there used to tell you, um, they, they would have it right in their owner's manuals, they'd have it on the brochures that you got in the mail, a little quick tip on there how to winterize it. They would say, uh, put some fuel stabilizer in there, run it for five minutes, get your whole fuel system uh, coated with that fuel stabilizer, drain it all out, your whole tank and everything, and run it until it was dry. Hang it up like that. They've changed their minds. Some of the manufacturers have actually changed their minds on that line of thinking right there. The new line of thinking is now with this engineered fuel, you just fill it up, run it for five minutes, make sure it, everything's coated in there with the engineered fuel, and leave it like that. Fill your tank right up to the top, hang it up, do whatever you do with it, and the next year it's gonna start fine because this stuff is good for two years uh, after the can is open because there's nothing really in there to go bad anymore. It's just pure paraffins in there. Uh, I gotta keep it real with you guys though. Uh, sorry, Steel, I gotta say this to my viewers. It, Moto Mix is not the only engineered fuel out there because I know I'm gonna get hit with comments if I don't say this. You got other stuff. You got your true fuel. You have Husqvarna makes some of this. Uh, you got your Aspen fuel. There's other ones out there that are not the exact same composition as uh, Steel Moto Mix, but they are way better than uh, what you get from your fuel station. So that's what I'm gonna try this year. I'm gonna, I'm gonna winterize all my equipment with uh, this and do exactly what I just said. And we're gonna see how it goes next year. But the, I mean, this stuff has been out for years now. And that's the general way of thinking from the manufacturers now. I'm gonna do that. I think you guys should try that too because it just makes a lot of sense to me. Well, I really hope that you appreciate the effort and the research that I put into this for you guys. Give me that thumbs up button, guys. I hope you liked it. And uh, share this with your friends. There are a lot of people out there that uh, don't really understand what the fuel problems are in their lawn and garden equipment. Share it with your friends like crazy. And uh, subscribe to my channel if you already haven't. Put some comments down. Let me know what you thought of this video as usual. Till the next video, guys. Steve.